Hello, welcome to Valve channel. I'm Stephen. Last video, we already talked about what is Arstan standard and uh, ASME standard. And uh, Arstan standard is for the engineer going to make a material. ASME standard is going to tell engineer how to design a valve. So ASME is design standard and Arstan is a material standard. So that is different. And all those material names are made by Arstan. So let's talk about uh, the material list in ASME Big 16.34 about all those material. So when you read this material list, you will find a lot of different material include. Actually, we don't need to understand all those material. It's very complicated. So commonly, first we divided all the steel to four group. We already talking about the four group carbon steel group, high temperature steel group, low temperature steel group, and the stainless steel group. So if we're using this way to memorize the steel in valve industry, that will be very easier for us to memorize all the material. And also, we don't need to memorize all the steel in this material list. So I already write down 20 different steel in valve industry. I believe 20 different steel already covered almost 19% of steel in valve industry. So we just need to talk about those 20 different steel in valve industry. That will be enough for us to understand. So when we talk about steel, first we need to talk about the standard. For example, the WCB. WCB is from the standard A216. A216. The A216 is the name for Arstan. So the full name for WCB is Arstan A216 WCB. That is the full name for this material. So when we look at uh, the standard Arstan 216, actually this standard includes a lot of information. So it includes a lot of information. For us, we just a valve design engineer or maybe you just a valve application engineer. We are not a material engineer, so we don't need to memorize everything in this standard. And also, we don't, I don't want to talk about everything in this standard. That will be more complicated. So basically, I think we need to understand the basic three things about one material. The three things is, first, of, of course, the name. You need to memorize the name of the material. Second is the chemical element. That is very important. You need to know what kind of chemical element inside this material. Because if you understand a material by understanding a chemical element, you will be very good to memorize or to understand how to use this material. Because different chemical elements will make different material property. So that is a very important part. And then the usage. So if you understand the chemical element in the material, so you will understand the usage very quickly. So in this video, we are going to talk about the different material. So what kind of chemical element inside those different materials? So that is our topic in today. Here is the most important six different chemical elements in valve industry. Material engineer will going to use those chemical elements to make different material for different flow control system. So let's talk about each element uh, one by one. Uh, I already print each element description from Wikipedia. So if you are interested in each element, you also can look for the description from the Wikipedia. So the first element is iron. Iron is the most common element on Earth, that is very easy to find on Earth. And also iron is the foundation for steel. Before we already talking about what is steel. Steel is combined by ferrin and carbon. It contained 200% to 2% carbon inside of steel. So iron for the scientific name is ferrin. The symbol is Fe. The reason why I didn't mention steel in this page using iron, 
because when we mention iron, sometimes it is confused with another kind of material, which is called a cast iron. So cast iron, this iron are different with this one. This one going to represent one kind of chemical element, but this iron which is going to represent one kind of material. So according to the description, cast iron is iron carbon alloy with a carbon contained greater than 2%. Greater than 2%. Remember we're talking about steel. The steel contained carbon lower than 2%. The reason material engineer going to make this kind of rule to make a steel which contained carbon lower than 2%. Because if one kind of material contained more carbon, this material will get more harder. But unfortunately, if you get so much carbon inside the steel, so that kind of material will, will get brittle, will very easily to break. So that's the reason we don't want so many carbon inside steel, inside the ferrum, even though carbon will make ferrum more stronger. So that is the difference between cast iron and iron. Actually, cast iron is one kind of unrefined iron from the earth. Sometimes we call that kind of material as a pig iron, just like uh, this uh, cast iron pan. If you drop this pan on ground, that very easy to break this pan because this pan is very brittle. If this pan made by cast iron, so that is uh, different between cast iron and iron. So first, I want to clarify about those different iron. It's very easy to confuse. So let's talk about the first group of material: carbon steel. So carbon steel made by iron mixed with another chemical element, uh, carbon. So we mix two elements together, it makes uh, carbon steel. So that is uh, very easy to understand. So let's look at uh, the standard in Aston. Here is the uh, two standard for the first group of material, carbon steel. The reason why we have two standards for one group of material because the material engineer will use the same chemical element to make the solid metal form using two kinds of way. One is called a forging, another is called a casting. So that is the reason we have two kinds of uh, standards for one kind of uh, uh, material. So let's look at the first one, A105. A105 is the standard for the forging carbon steel. So when we're talking about one kind of material, we need to understand what kind of chemical element inside this kind of material. So lo let's look at the second page. So in material standard, it all provide one kind of table, which is the most important table in standard for the material, which is called a chemical requirement table. So in this table, you will find what kind of chemical element inside this material. So this standard is for the carbon steel, so it must contain carbon inside. So the reason why we put carbon inside steel, because we already talking about what is steel. Steel is mixed by ferrin and carbon. And the reason why we use carbon to mix with ferrin because carbon will make the ferrin more stronger. More carbon, the steel will become more harder. But we cannot put so many carbon inside the steel that will make the steel become brittle, very easy to break. So it has a max contained. It contained 0.35% carbon inside this kind of material. So that is a carbon steel. And also, carbon steel has a very common weakness, which is very easy to get rust and corrosion. So we want to improve that kind of property. We want to make the uh, steel get rust uh, slowly, but actually we cannot stop the steel get rust. So that kind of steel we call that is uh, stainless steel. That is, that is different material. So in carbon steel, we use another kind of element to make the steel get rust slowly. That kind of chemical element which is called a manganese. Manganese. The symbol for manganese is Mn. 
This kind of uh, chemical element are very commonly used in carbon steel industry. So the function for manganese is is used for rust and corrosion prevention on steel. So that is a function for manganese. So you will see in all the carbon steel, it all contained manganese inside. So that is a basic two chemical element inside A105. And also in A105 just contained one kind of material. So let's talk about uh, the next uh, standard. A216. A216 is the standard for the casting carbon steel. Casting carbon steel. And uh, from the name, you can see this term for high temperature service. Actually, this kind of material cannot work in very high temperature environment compared with high temperature steel. Compared with a high temperature steel. So this kind of steel just can work in, according to ASME B16.34, temperature pressure reading table. This kind of material, A216 WCB, cannot work in the temperature higher than 425 Celsius degree, that is equal 737 Fahrenheit degree. So if you want one kind of material to build a valve which is going to work in high temperature environment, which is higher than this temperature, you need to choose another kind of stew, which is called a high temperature stew. We will talk about that kind of stew in my next video. So that is the temperature for the carbon stew. So also we need to look at what kind of chemical element inside A216. So it also contained one table called a chemical requirement table. So in this table, you will see this standard divided to three kind of grid, three kind of grid, WCA, WCB, and WCB, uh, WCC. WCB better than WCA, WCC better than WCB. So that is a basic principle for this standard. So the chemical element are almost the same with A. 105, we just talk about. It contains carbon and the manganese inside, and the function we already talked about. So that is the reason A216, it contained a grid code, WCA, WCB, and WCC. And uh, A105 doesn't contain the grid number, because A105 just contained one kind of material. So that is a principle. We just use the standard name to represent the material. So that is the basic information about uh, A216 and uh, the material A105. So in my next video, we, we are going to talk about uh, the high temperature and low temperature and the uh, stainless steel. So thank you for your watching. See you next video. Bye-bye.